So welcome back to the second of our three-part series, completely exploring Johnny Walker. And if you want to look at the reasons why we're doing this, go back to the first video where we talk all about the history, but we're gonna put this timer back up here again. And this is the timer or the counter that is counting the bottle sales of Johnny Walker while you're watching this video, because based on last year's figures, they sell 8.64 bottles of Johnny Walker every single second. So make sure you watch this timer because that's the volume of bottles of Johnny Walker that are being sold, which is just mind blowing. Now, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We've got loads of other content on in our next installment of this series. We're going to be doing a full review, a tasting review, unusual for this channel, a full tasting review of every single bottle in the Johnny Walker lineup. So now we've gone through the history of the, the brand, essentially, let's take a look at some of the most important things now, and that is the bottles. And we can only start in one place, and that is the bottom of the range with Red Label. Now, Red Label is one of the OGs. It was created or introduced in 1909 as part of the original core range, but it was originally called Walker's Special Old Highland, which was introduced in 1906. It's a no-age statement whiskey, and it's got, it's, it, it, there's over 30 whiskies that go into it. You've got Tininit, Cardu, Kalila, and you've got a huge chunk of Cameron Bridge in here as well. It's about 20 pounds a bottle, depending on where you get it from. And since, get this, since 1945, it has been the world's best selling Scotch whiskey. Since 1945, that is a long time to hold that mantle. And it's available in 180 countries. And I don't understand, well, I do understand why, but I don't understand why. Why don't I understand it? Because it's, let's face it people, it's crap whiskey. It's, it's terrible whiskey if you drink it on its own. But that is one of the fundamental problems that people have with Johnny Walker. They buy it, they drink it and eat and go, ugh, that's terrible. It's not made for that, it's made for mixing. It's made as a cheap value-based bottle. It's, call it 25 pounds a bottle, in the UK, there's over 50% of that is taxes and duty. So if you imagine there's, that leaves you sort of like around 10 pounds for the whiskey, the glass, the labels, the packaging, the distribution, the wholesaler margin, the retailer margin, Diageo's margin, everybody in there. So it doesn't have that much whiskey in there, but it is, you know, it's cheap whiskey. If you need whiskey and you haven't got much money, this'll do the job nicely. So there it is, it's your red label. We're gonna do something weird. And this will become, I've got my kitchen scales here. Why have I got my kitchen scales? Well, this is interesting to see. As we go forward, we're gonna weigh all the bottles. I'm weird, I know. Anyway, the Johnny Walker Red Label comes in at 1,071 grams. 1,071 grams for a bottle of Johnny Walker Red Label. You can see the obvious slanted label on here. These are all stickers that are applied. And it's basically as little as you can get away with in a product. No box or labels. You know, these Royal Warrant labels are basically all stickers. The Striding Man is a sticker. So it's just cheap so that you can change. The glass stays the same, but you change the, 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 the get up according to which country you're retailing in. So Johnny Walker Red label, cheap as chips, stick it with a mixer, can't go wrong. Now, what comes after red? Black Label, Johnny Walker Black Label. This is probably one of the best whiskies in the world. I'll explain more soon. It was introduced in 1909. It's kind of, it's, it's one of the OGs. This was the old Highland whiskey when Alexander created it in 1865. And the blend was renamed as Extra Special Old Highland when the range of whiskies was expanded in 1906. It's a 12 year old age statement as it says here on the bottle. And it also says here, oh, get into focus. Ah, oh, it says it up here on the capsule anyway, on, on the top of the lid. There's 40 malts that go into this. Blair Athol, Cardew, Strathmill, Kalila, and again, a big chunk of Cameron Bridge. Now, this is the whiskey that changed the world, people. This is the OG. It's probably not too much of a stretch to say that, again, most single malt distilleries wouldn't be around if it wasn't for the success of Johnny Walker and his original blend, which again would originally morph into the Black Label. Now, if you can buy bottles of this from the 1960s or 50s or yeah, six, 50s, 60s, it is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal whiskey, people. Don't be put off by it being a blend. This is phenomenal whiskey. You speak to loads of master blenders. Watch, watch the videos on, on, on YouTube where they interview sort of master blenders and uh, head distillers and stuff like that. A lot of them say that Johnny Walker Black Label is one of their go-to bottles. 
it's around 30 pounds a bottle. And you know, if you've, if you've got 25 pounds, or you never buy a bottle of red label, try and get a bottle of black label. The RRP on this is about 30 pounds. I bought this yesterday in Tesco for 20, 23 pounds. So it's cheap people. Again, there's 50% at least of that going into taxes. Time for the scales. Johnny Walker red label, uh, black label also weighs 1,071 grams. It is exactly the same as the red label, slight different bottle chain, slightly different bottle shape, but it's pretty much the same. Now, just as a very quick interlude here, I'm gonna teach you how to date your bottles of Johnny Walker. So there are some key date changes. So in 1941, the black label changed from Old Highland, or all of them changed from Old Highland to Old Scotch. If it says Old Highland, it's prior to 1941. If it says Old Scotch, it's after 1941. In 1959, on the, on the, on the bottle, on the, on, the, on the bottle here and on the capsule here, the Kilmarnock crest was removed. So if, it's, if, you, if you don't have the Kilmarnock crest on it, you know that it's after 1859. If it does have the Kilmarnock crest on, you know it's prior to 1859. In 1956, they were given the Royal, well, they weren't given the Royal Warrant in 1956, they were given the Royal Warrant much earlier, but in 1956, you get the Royal Warrant from Queen Elizabeth. And the, originally these were put on uh, slip labels down at the bottom, but as you can see now, it's just on a little label here. And interestingly, it's 2023, and we're still seeing by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen on the bottles, even though I bought this yesterday. Let's wait and see if the Royal Warrant continues with Charles. Anyway, let's continue. We're moving up the range now. We're moving on to, where is it? Oh, we've got a box. We've got a box, it must be more premium. Double black. Double Black People. This one is a modern introduction. It was released in 2011 as a travel retail variant. It's no age statement. Remember, the black is 12 euros, the double black is a no age statement. So that means it's got a slightly different amount of whiskey in here. The, the, the whiskies that go into the blend are the same, but the ratios are completely different. So it's basically got a massive dollop of Kalila in here because the double black is a very smoky, peaty whiskey. And if you like that, buy double black. It's about 35 pounds. It's about 10 pounds more than the black label. And what are you getting for it? Well, you're getting a nice black smoky bottle and you're also losing the age statement. So this is 12 year old whiskey. This is a minimum of three years old, but it's probably much younger. Otherwise it would have stuck an age statement on it. So it's, again, this is where the scales are gonna start coming into this. So let's see, double black weighs 1,256 grams. So it's nearly 200 grams heavier than the, than the red or black, even though the bottles are pretty much exactly the same but you're gonna see a trend here. You also see slightly better labels. The labels are a bit nicer. They look a bit nicer on here. And it's just a better, better presentation and you get like a beautiful cardboard box that you can probably knock the bottle through if you shake it a bit too much. It's still cheap livery people, but it's only 35 pound a bottle. So what do you expect? Ah, things are getting interesting people. We are moving up. We are moving up to Green Label. Green Label, I love the, I, lo I love Green Label. What, black Label, Green Label, two of my favourite of this range. It was introduced in 1997, and it's a bit of a bit of an iffy history. This one, so stick with me. It was introduced in 1997, and it was called Johnny Walker Pure Malt, 15 year old. What's a pure malt? Basically, the pure malt infers that it contains only single malt scotch whiskey. It doesn't contain any grain whiskey here. So you've essentially got four distilleries worth of output going into this. Talisker, Linkwood, Crag and Moore, and Kalila. So you can kind of get the profiles that you're gonna be pulling out of, it, out of the whiskey from those distilleries. It's, it's sensational and it's not like the red and black because there's no grain in it. It's also 15 years old and it's also 45 pounds a bottle on average on retail. So 45 pounds for 15 year old whiskey. It's all single malt whiskey. Yes, there's several distilleries mixed together, but it's all single malt whiskey. It also looks a lot nicer than the others, but it's, it's got an interesting history. It was developed by Mike Collings 
and he was the founder. Well, he's he's he he developed this, and he's also now an independent bottler of Firkin whiskey, I think it's called. So you've got someone. I think we should look into to, 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 to some of these people a little bit more in the future on this channel because these guys have created sort of like worldwide sensational blends. Anyway, it's caused Johnny Walker a few problems over the years because in 1997, it was released as a 15 year old. In 2004, it was changed to green label. So in 1997, it was pure malt 15 year old. In 2004, it changes to the green label and it basically, it all remained the same. Basically, you just got the green label. In 2012, they, Johnny Walker decided to stop selling Green Label for some reason, except in Taiwan, where in Taiwan, Green Label was a sensation and people kept on buying it like crazy. But then they kind of had that like Coke Zero, uh, Coke Classic moment and went, ah, oh, yeah, we cocked up here, didn't we? And in 2016, Green Label was brought back into the global markets. Now, let's get to my stupid little scales here and let's see. The green label weighs 1,419 grams, 1,419 grams. So we're nearly 300 grams over the weight of a bottle of Johnny Walker, red or black. This is telling you people, and this is the first bottle that you see, this. And this is the thing that tells you that you drink an expensive whiskey. You see this glass at the bottom, you see it on Macallan's, you see it on all sorts. This dump of glass at the bottom makes the bottle feel heavy. Oh, it's good quality, this, compared to the crappy red label. It is there's nothing different. 700 milliliters of liquid in both, slight difference in ABV, but broadly speaking, the liquid weighs 700 grams each, and you've got 1,071 grams in this one, and you've got 1,419 grams in this one. They're adding this glass on purpose to make it feel like a better quality product. It does come in a nicer box. I think this is quite a nice getup, really. I like the color green, I like this. Let's do our shape test. Oh, one more. Oh, come on. That survived pretty well. So it's in a much better box than the black label. And as you can tell, we're into scientific rigorous testing here. Now, we're going premium again, people. What's better than green? Gold, gold, hold on tight people. It's another one with a weird history. Introduced in 1995, it was an 18 year old. It's got 15 whiskies in there. Talisker, Klein Leash, Royal Loch Nagger, Cardew, Glendullen. And the blend, the, the blend specific, specification, again, was, was created and signed off by Mike Collings. Are you spotting a trend here with these sort of modern bottlings here? And it was actually inspired by Alex Walker's centenary blend that was created in 1820 to celebrate the centenary of John Walker and Sons. And it was produced using those notes, but the notes were incomplete. So I think Mike, read from what I've read, had to put his own sort of like creative twist onto it. It was discontinued. So remember, this was an 18 year old to start with. It was discontinued in 2011, which coincided with the launch of the platinum label, 18 year old. And gold label was relaunched as this, the Johnny Walker gold label reserve in 2012 as a travel retail exclusive. This is not the same as the original 18 year old gold. This, this new iteration of it was developed by Mike Collings, again, that Firkin whiskey chap, and somebody called John Glasser. Anyone know what's that? Is that a compass box? Ah, they're small blenders. Compass box are sensational people. Mike and John, uh, 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 they, they've done so much for the world of whiskey, especially Compass Box, you know, with blended whiskey. We really ought to cover that on this channel, really, because Compass Box do amazing things with blended whiskey, similar to what House of Hazel would have doing, but kind of Compass Box of the OG with way more artistic flair, in my opinion. But anyway, this new gold, uh, gold label reserve, it's focused around Klein Leash, Cardew, Blair, Athel and Cleela. And again, there's a big dump of grain in there from, or there's a dump of grain in there from Cameron Bridge. And Talisker was dropped from the new lineup probably because they were running out of decent reserves to put into products like this. Now, the bottle for the gold label, it's, it's nice. Again, it's similar to the green label bottle. You get more presentation. Let's weigh it. My God, this is how you review whiskey, isn't it? You weigh the bottles. But this is important because gold, it's also 1,419 grams. So essentially, 
these are both premium bottles and they're both using the same super premium heavy dump of glass at the bottom of the bottle to make them feel heavy and go, ooh, ah, that's nice. Ah, this bottle looks ropey, people. Let's see how we get on. Will it survive being, yeah, to be honest, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Gold label passes. Right, we're getting serious now. We're getting up to about 90 pounds a bottle. And, uh, again, let's pay marketing companies loads of money. We've got an 18 year old. Let's pay a marketing company loads of money to tell us what we need. You need an 18 year, but we've got an 18 year old. We've got the gold. Yeah, but drop the 18 from the gold and we can kind of do volume 11. We can do platinum. An 18 year old, platinum, do it. Let's just do it. Welcome to the world, Johnny Walker Platinum. It is an 18 year old, released in 2011, and it's an 18 year old whiskey, like the Johnny Walker Gold was, but then they dropped the A statement from there. Cardew, Glen Elgin, Acroix, Blair Athol, Kalila, and Cameron Bridge. And it's better than gold because it's platinum, and well, yeah, it's gone through loads of changes in its time, though. Don't worry about that. They did pay lots of marketing consultants about this. So in 2011, it was introduced. In 2017, it was platinum label was phased out and then it turned into the Johnny Walker 18 year old and now it is kind of like the Johnny Walker 18 year old. So yeah, pay lots of money to people to relabel your product and that's what you get. But anyway, you're paying 90 quid a bottle now and this is, to be honest with you, this is an absolute bargain really. What, what other 18 year old whiskey can you buy for 90 pounds that comes in a big fancy tin? Eat that folio. Right. Beautiful looking bottle. You can't deny that that is not a good looking bottle. And then in here, you also get two little miniatures of the blue label. And why the hell not? Why wouldn't you want that? Anyway, it's good whiskey. It's fantastic whiskey. But how much does it weigh? Benchmark is the gold at 1,419 grams. Oh my gosh, people. This is definitely better whiskey because this one weighs 1,602 grams. So as we know, more glass makes better whiskey. And you know what? It's pretty damn beautiful, isn't it? There you go. There's no point shaking a tin because I'm just going to dislodge, dislodge it. But anyway, you can kind of see that the get up, everything, if you come across from the original red label to the 18 year old, we, we've got, a, we've got a, a lot of steps up. We've got a lot of steps up here, but we've not stepped up to the daddy of them all. Probably one of the best whiskies in the world, in my opinion, the Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now, Blue Label was introduced in 1992. It's no age statement whiskey, and it's about 175 pounds a bottle, which is a lot of money, is it? Folios are 350, 300 quid. That's no age statement. There's loads of no age statements from new distilleries coming out for similar price. This is the daddy. This is a really, 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 really badass bottle. Oh, and it looks gorgeous too. So there's some incredible whiskey that goes into it. You've got Ben Rinners, Cardew, Clan Leash, Kalila. You've got Cameron Bridge in there and you've got Port Dundas. And again, this was developed by a certain Tom Jago and Mike Collings. So Mike Collings, again, is responsible for introducing some of the most amazing blended whiskies to the market. It was originally developed for the Japanese duty-free market. And why the hell is it a no-age statement whiskey? Because they wanted a super premium product that was based about quality and not on age. Clearly, they use age to sell some of the products like the 18-year-olds, but what Blue Label's managed to do is position itself as one of a, a super premium whiskey. And let's not forget, lots of people do see this as a super premium whiskey, even though it's not got an age statement. And this is because the focus from the very start is to do, it is basically to do, to produce the best whiskies disregarding the age statements. If you read the rumors on the internet, it, it, it ranges from sort of seven to 50 year old whiskey that goes into blend, the blend and only one in every 10,000 casks is selected for the blend. Now, it's, it's, it's kind of designed to recreate some of the 19th century profiles that you get here. And it's also one of the most expensive blended whiskies or core range blended whiskies that you get on the market. Now, the get up 
is quite good. You, let's look at the box here, because this is, this is a nice box. No matter what you do in here, this is a nice box. So the bottle lives in its little place in here. Nice premium case. Again, ooh, concealed magnets. That's what everybody likes to use nowadays, isn't it? And then again, is it premium? Is it premium? Yes. It's got the big dollop of glass at the bottom. Let's just zero these scales. And we are at a whopping, there you go, 2,070 grams for the blue label. There's a kilo, one kilogram, 1,000 grams of extra glass in the blue label versus the red label. Why? Because when you pick this up, you go, blimey, that's heavy. That could go in Cluedo. You could knock someone out with this. You could do damage with this one. This one, it's a bit more lock stock. It's kind of like if you hit someone with it, it's probably gonna shatter and do damage that way. A kilo of glass. Why do you need a kilo extra glass? It's, it's basically it's marketing people. It's the same reason that a lot of the modern high super premium bottles use these big heavy bottles. It's because it conveys that sense of premium because when you pick it up in your hand, you can't taste the whiskey but something that's heavier and better that's gonna cost a heck of a lot more to ship, you know, pretty much you can ship an extra, you can ship an extra bottle of this in the same way as this. So it is amazing whiskies. And again, like, look, why the hell haven't we tasted these whiskies here? This is not what we do on this channel. We talk about histories, we look at the things that other people don't talk about. Who the hell cares about how heavy a bottle is? Well, me, if you like talking about investing whiskey and collecting whiskey, this is the channel for you. So there we have it. It is the ultimate history of every core range bottle of Johnny Walker. Make sure you stay tuned for part three, which is gonna talk all about the review and the tasting notes of these bottles. And if you've not already watched it, go back to video one, which talks all about the history of the brand and where the brand came from.